Hey everyone, welcome back to G.I. Joe on the Tabletop. My name is Brad, aka Old Man Morn from the Cast Dice Podcast, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Hiss Tank. Now, we're not going to actually do a full review of the Hiss Tank and talk about how you can represent it on the tabletop, go through the lore, look at the blueprints. That will be a video coming up soon. Um, one of the questions that I've had from quite a few people who have been watching this series is, do you need to 3D print the vehicles in a smaller scale. Is it possible to do it if you don't own a 3D printer? Well, yes, it is. Um, now, there are a few vehicles that are available through Arctic Skunk on Thingiverse. Now, technically, that is a 3D printing service. However, he makes a Century tank um, that is a little different from today's review, but he also makes a Vamp and a few other bits and pieces that work well in your G.I. Joe armies. They do have two sizes, be warned. Uh, one is more of a 148 scale and one is a more 50, 156 scale. Um, but today I'm going to talk about something completely different and probably more affordable than anything else. Now you could say, but you know, 3D printing is pretty cheap. Not if you don't own a printer. You have to go find someone, ask them to print it. It can be a problem. And then you even need to know what size to print it in. Today I'm going to talk about a product that is perfect out of the box for your G.I. Joe gaming purposes, ready to go. And it is the Running Press His Tank. Now, Running Press is a publishing company out of the United States. They've been around 50 years. Um, they do products like uh, novelty hardback miniature versions of books, cookbooks, uh, collectibles associated with famous intellectual property like Transformers or Harry Potter, uh, things like that. The thing that I'm most interested in that they do is, of course, the His Tank. Now, of all the G.I. Joe vehicles over the years, I mean, there are quite a few that you could consider iconic or classic or easily identifiable as G.I. Joe. However, I think it's interesting that they chose the Hiss Tank. Now, clearly it is the Hiss is the most iconic Cobra vehicle. Uh, I guess it's because it's supposed to be mass produced. I don't know why they chose it. I'm just glad that they did. And they put out this, this little guy, the Running Press Hiss Tank. Now, this is almost perfectly 156 scale out of the box. And what I did was I took a screenshot of the box right here. Now, this isn't an unboxing video. I'm not going to open the box in front of you. However, I am going to look at the pieces that came in the box, and then I'm going to talk about how to convert this into a usable model if you are going to be using this for games like Bolt Action or other uh, 156 scale tabletop games. So without further ado, let's open up the box and see what it comes with. And here we have the actual running press his tank. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty good representation of a his tank. For those familiar with the toy, um, this will look very familiar to you. Now, there are several important similarities and differences, uh, and I'll go through that as we are looking at the tank. Now, just like the original tank, there is a cup cupola where you can stand models uh, in, and they can be the gunner on your his tank. Um, now, unlike the original, you'll notice there are these giant cartoony cannons. It almost looks as though um, it's a super a Japanese super deformed version of the Hiss tank, but it's only because of these guns, because they are so thick and, as I said before, cartoony. And you'll notice that there's a giant red button. Now, clearly that is not a G.I. Joe cannon, but that button is there for a reason. Um, there is a spot under this for batteries and there is uh, a soundboard and lights built in, which is a nice little feature if you're wanting to annoy students in your class like I did for a while and, uh, you know, generally be a pest on the tabletop. It is a lot of fun. However, uh, it does kind of get in the way of the aesthetic. Now, the original His Tank um, could fall uh, or be susceptible to droopy gun syndrome, I think is what it's called, because there were little pins that held the guns uh, in different positions. However, because the wiring is within these gun barrels for the lights, this is actually really smooth. There are no pins in here at all. And though I've played, I've literally had one of these on my desk at school for over a year and you know played with it constantly, A, I've never run down the batteries, even though I've used it a lot, and my kids have played with it uh, during wet day timetable when it's too rainy to go out to play. Um, th those batteries have never run out, and this has never developed droopy gun syndrome. So in that way, the running press tank is uh, perhaps better than the original. Um, now, also like the original, it has a clear canopy. 
um, that you can put figures inside. Now, if you look carefully, just like the original one, there is some basic detailing inside for controls. Uh, now, this doesn't come with the driver and it doesn't come with a gunner. However, I have built both out of uh, Warlord Games plastic models, um, 156 scale uh, models. Um, this is basically 156, so it does work well if you are playing game systems like Bolt Action or Chain of Command or whatever other uh, small-scale um, military conflict you want to play on the tabletop. This is a perfect size. Um, but be warned, it's not 48, 148 scale. It is 156. Um, I do like how the tracks um, are almost identical to the original Hiss Tank. And I do also like they did not have to put that in you get that detailing, the engine detailing between the tracks and the actual hull. As a kid, I love that, and I love that it's on this. Uh, just like the original Hiss, we have the running board on the back um, that models can ride on, um, so you can somehow represent that with uh, rules on the tabletop, uh, and maybe uh, the carrying capacity of maybe two models, because that's what it originally held. And it does have the tow hook of the original model, which is also cool. Uh, now, if we look at this, though, there are a couple of notable differences besides the gun barrels. One of these two giant holes in the chest piece of the tank, um, which is, you know, if you are looking for a direct representation of the hiss, is a little off-putting. Now, another thing that I've noticed that is actually the same, but was, you know, if I was a kid and handed a hiss tank, and the hiss tank was my favorite, or one of my favorite G.I. Joe tanks, definitely my favorite Cobra vehicle, You'll notice um, the tracks and the hull are uh, level. There is no, you know, most tanks have, in fact, all tanks have uh, a clearance so that, you know, it doesn't get, it doesn't belly up on the smallest bump in the road. And the His tank never had that. And that's because of these rollers that the original and this version have. And that's at the front and the back. Um, now that always bothered me, uh, as did... The, uh, and these holes bothered me with the running press. So when I converted this tank and I wanted it to uh, look more like an actual battle-worthy Hiss tank, I, when I went back and remodeled this, um, I actually cut the hull completely in, way up, using a pair of clippers and then a sharp hobby knife, and I cut it so the tracks were off... Uh, tracks were separated and there was that giant gap in the middle. Now I cut it way up and then I used a piece of plastic card and I stuck it down. Um, if you look on this, the tracks are level with the hull and I wanted that to be different. I thought the tracks should be further out. Well, I wasn't able to achieve that look uh, without cutting way into the hull and rebuilding it. So I kind of cheated and did the opposite um, and it optically creates the illusion that these are on different planes and that just in my mind looks more authentic. Now I did the same thing on the rear and in the process I had to cut off the tow bar because that actually is a removable piece. The second you trim the bottom, that actually slides out. So I just, again, replaced it with a piece of plastic card, stuck it in, and I cut the rollers out. And that gap, I mean, you can still see there is the cavity in the middle. I didn't want to destroy the structural integrity of the tank. So I left that in place. And once it's down though, on the tabletop, you just see that that isn't level, um, not, for example, that it is belly dragging on the ground. Um, but yeah, now I will get back to my recreation of this tank in a minute, but before that, I think it's probably important to talk about some of the features that come with the running Hiss tank as well. Now, what is a Hiss tank without the famous 788 iconography on the side? Just like the famous YouTuber, Hooded Gerber Commander 788, um, the 788 sticker was uh, iconic on all of my hisses I had as a kid. I had two at different points. I had the original one with the clear 788 numbers, and then the later ones with the filled in, um, in sort of the second press of the vehicle uh, in the Hasbro run. Now, I really liked the, uh, the red filled in version of that. Um, you could really see it on the side of the black Hiss tank. It was the only way, because what you know, the ones before that had been relatively well. They were translucent, but they had a red outline. And though that would have looked great um, if it was maybe a white vehicle or a lighter colored vehicle, because it was black, and you're trying to cover it up with a uh, low tr uh, transparency 
red, it just blended right into the side of the tank. But that blood red, nice thick red 788 decal on the side of the tank, man, it looks good. So again, all of these stickers come with the kit. Um, these are stickers, they are not transfers. You don't have to use water or uh, tweezers, although for these, maybe I would. They are very small, which is why I'm using a tiny brush. Now, you can see uh, the Cobra symbols. Um, you have you know, all the little side diagrams that go on where you can tow the vehicle on the front, the control panel for the guns, even though that giant red sticker is there. Uh, but more importantly, the headlights, which you can kind of see here. Uh, it's hard to tell because the white, if I cover up, yeah, there we go. You can see the white headlights there. Now, if these actually pull off, these were done in a really interesting manner. Uh, the backing actually on most of mine tends to come off with the stickers and it takes a little bit of work to get them separated. I'm not gonna bother here uh, on this video because it did take me using scissors to get them off. Now they are clear and they do work well on these tanks, but since I'm painting them, uh, I'm gonna hand paint those anyway. Uh, I did have somebody ask if I knew where I could get uh, these Cobra symbols, not as stickers, but as decals. Um, there's a company, if you look them up on YouTube, they're called Company B. Um, they do make Cobra decals that you can use proper uh, decal dissolver and stick the actual iconography onto vehicles really clearly and it looks really nice. So yeah, Company B. Uh, that's just company space the letter B. Now, where are you going to stick all these stickers? Well, the running press kit doesn't come with the traditional blueprints that most vehicles uh, for G.I. Joe do. It does, however, come with a diagram that tells you where to stick the stickers, uh, which is cool. Um, and I like that it is that blue and white of the original blueprints. It does closely resemble that. It did feel good to open the box and to see that. It uh, warmed me to the cockles of my heart. Uh, but just like... Um, you saw with you know some of the original tank drawings, um, the decals for the front, for example, are shown rectangular here, even though they are not. They're cut in on the sides on the actual decals. And uh, I do love that they tell you to put the control panel on top of that red button. So clearly, <clears throat> you know, they did the best they could. It looks great though, and I, I do like it. Uh, now, there was one other thing in the box, and that is this little booklet. Um, which is a lot of fun. It is Operation Anti-Venom. Uh, and it is just a little description saying, it's a little story telling you about G.I. Joe. So you have a memo from General Hawk explaining who G.I. Joe is um, and who Cobra is and what you know your mission will be. Now it is interesting because it does talk about the kidnapping of uh, Dr. Burkhart and the attempted sabotage of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System, which are plot lines from the G.I. Joe comic book very early in the piece. Now, what's also interesting is they talk about the all-out invasion of Washington, which doesn't happen for much later in uh, the, the canon. I mean, there was the raid on the Mint uh, in the teens of the comic book, but that is not what this is talking about. So, um, and of course, when they talk about the actual mission itself, it's to capture a Hiss tank, which of course was hardly revolutionary later on in the series when you did have, for example, an odd invasion of Washington, D.C. And it's the mission is to raid Cobra Island, which, you know, was later on as well. So, you know, it sort of jumps canon back and forth a little bit in the story, but it is nice. It does, if you were a kid, you could definitely understand what this tank does. Um, and I really like the art here. Uh, now, <clears throat> we do get um, the profiles of the G.I. Joe personnel who are going on this mission. Uh, and you do get short, sharp versions of the file cards from the back of the figures. Um, these are very, I mean, this is basically one paragraph from each of the file cards. Um, some of the art has been redone. Some of it is original. Uh, and by redone, it's been uh, sort of remade to look like the originals. But you get all the classics. I mean, you get a bunch of the originals, and then you get some fan favorites from later series like, you know, Rock and Roll. Sorry, not Rock and Roll. Um, Flint, uh, Gung Ho, Lady J, Ro uh, Rock and Roll, um, Shipwreck, and Spirit. So, yeah, there's, you know, 
lot of great details gone into this. Now, this is just a cut and paste of Larry Hama's work. Um, although some of these uh, have the data from later cards. Hawks, for example, is his later figure, not his original one. And that's nice too. Uh, now, you do get a little bit with the Cobra heroes as well. Uh, so it, it does, again, set the, set the scene a little bit. And of course, we get the later version of art from Firefly. So this is a cool little book. It definitely sets the, uh, sets the stage if, you wanna, if you're a kid and you're wanting to play with this. And this is a cool little book. And I thought it was a nice little addition uh, to go with the tank. If you uh, weren't familiar with the intellectual property or the story of G.I. Joe and you got this, then, you know, you could play with it. Now here is my version of the Hiss tank. As I said, I took one of these running press Hiss tanks and I've cut it up and I've rebuilt it to play more serious tabletop games with. Now you'll notice the paint job is super cartoony. Um, that is because uh, in order to get the detail on these tanks to show up, uh, because they are pure black, I had to turn up the lights a little bit. And unfortunately that made, um, while these details do look, at least in my opinion, pretty good under regular normal lighting, under these lighting, it does look a little ridiculous. So uh, please bear with. Um, now you'll notice that I replaced the cannons on this with plastic card tubes and I um, sculpted using green stuff, the uh, cannon tips to make them resemble the original gun on the original hip, hiss. Now, yes, this piece on top is too big for those guns, I understand that. Um, but I wanted to have the control panel that the gunner could uh, use. Uh, now you'll notice that I have painted it black. I have not gone back to do the detailing yet, but I haven't stuck the gunner in either. Uh, now the gunner I got, uh, the gunner is largely pieces from a Warlord kit with a head that was uh, sculpted by a friend of mine to resemble the original Hiss tank driver. Um, now, if we do look, as you can see, I've replaced the front with, as I said earlier, with that uh, piece of plastic card to cut to look like an actual hull piece. And again, I created clearance under the tracks. Um, I also use putty and uh, a hobby blade to, uh, to cut down the very prominent mold line on the back and the gap where the two hull pieces came together. While it's not perfect, I think it is far less obtrusive now than it was before. Likewise, especially on the nose and on the hull, uh, that was really all you could see when you first looked at the tank. So uh, yeah, <clears throat> now I hand painted the uh, headlights on this vehicle. Now I could have gone with the more traditional look but I actually kind of wanted to, uh, I was watching Dr. No when I was painting this and I kind of wanted to have the, the eyes of a dragon almost on the front, um, just like the, the flame tank in that. So I know that isn't necessarily canon, but yeah, it works. Again, there's four layers of yellow and multiple whites in there to create the almost jewel effect for the headlights that you just can't see in this lighting. Uh, but this is my version of the Hiss and I'm quite happy with it. Um, I use Games Workshop's mud technical paint over the tracks to give it a little more texture and then dry brushed it over the top. Um, the model is basically just black primed um, using GW uh, Games Workshop black spray primer. And then I just use several layers of gray to uh, outline all the lines that would be there. And then I just edge highlighted um, with a much lighter gray just to give it those cartoony highlights. And yeah, that is my Hiss Tank. Now let's talk about if this is actually good for the tabletop. Now, in my opinion, if you do convert the Hiss Tank and you do have it with the gun barrels that are shaved down um, and you make the hull fit a little better and you paint it up, it, it, it looks good. I like it a lot. Um, it looks just as good on the tabletop next to my other 3D printed vehicles and my other normally uh, sourced 156 military vehicles. So I think it fits really well. Um, here, for example, is an Arctic Skunk, uh, who I talked about earlier from Shapeways. This is his Vamp Jeep. Now, this is 156 scale. If you put it next to the Hiss, it's hard to tell because the Hiss is dark colors. They do match perfectly scale-wise. Um, now, I was able to find these on Amazon for very cheap back in the day, uh, which is why, if you noticed earlier, you start to see a pileup. As I said, I had two hisses as a kid, 
But if you told me that as an adult, you know, playing with toy soldiers, I'd have 11 hisses, that would be another thing entirely. Um, to the point where I've actually started cutting the tops off of them and replacing them um, with specially 3D printed parts, which you can get easily online to make the Arctic hiss. Uh, you can also make the Septic hiss. So I'm gonna be making all sorts of hiss variants, including the Crimson Guard hiss. So look for those in my uh, proper hiss lore vehicle uh, videos later. But would I recommend these? Absolutely. <laughs> if you can find them cheaply like I did, they are perfect. If you have to spend a little bit more money through eBay or through Amazon because they're a little more rare these days, I still recommend it. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I did this video because I had questions about the materials and where to source the models. If you have any further questions about how I'm making the models that I'm using for my GI Joe product, uh, sorry, project, uh, if you want to know anything more about the process of converting models, message below. Um, or message the Cast Dice Facebook page, and uh, I use all that feedback, feedback when creating these videos. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Again, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much to my YouTube fave, uh, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Of course, when we are talking about the 788, there it is on the tank, um, who uh, is a guy whose work I follow quite a lot online, uh, a big fan of his stuff, and he uh, shared the link for the, the first video for this series which was um, very humbling. So thank you. And uh, as always, guys, have a great time. And I look forward to sharing more of my G.I. Joe project with you in the future. Goodbye.